Hey there, I am Marup Said, a microbiologist and a science educator. Science is my passion and I'm here to share it with you. Biochemical test. Triple sugar iron agar test. But before starting this video, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. Let's start with a table of content. First, we will look into the objective of this test. Its principle, requirements, procedure, result and interpretation, quality control, precautions, applications and lastly limitations. Let's start with a brief introduction about TSIA test. Each bacterial genus possesses distinctive biochemical activities and enzyme systems following the basis for the differentiation and identification of bacteria through biochemical properties. Although carbohydrates like glucose, lactose and sucrose are simple sugars, diverse bacteria employ them in various ways leading to the production of distinct end products. Furthermore, some bacteria may not utilize one or all of these sugars, with variations in their ability to ferment these sugars and produce acid and gas as byproducts. The triple sugar iron agar test served as a biochemical assay designed to differentiate bacteria based on their capacity to ferment these three sugars and generate acid and hydrogen sulfate gas. In 1944, S. Edwin Solkin and Joseph C. Wellslet first introduced the TSI medium as a selective and differential media for distinguishing bacteria, particularly those of the Enterobacteriaceae family. In 1945, Hajna A.A. introduced modification to this medium and it continues to be an essential tool in microbiology laboratories primarily for the differentiation and tentative identification of gram-negative enteric pathogens. The triple sugar iron agar test closely resembles Kalinger's iron agar test, with the key distinction being the inclusion of 1% sucrose as an additional sugar in the TSI medium, alongside glucose and lactose, which aids in the differentiation process. Let's learn about the objectives. To distinguish gram-negative enteric bacilli from one another. To assess whether the bacteria can metabolize glucose, lactose and or sucrose while generating hydrogen sulfide gas. To discern between bacteria that ferment lactose and those that do not. Let's learn the principle behind of this test. The TSIA test relies on the unique metabolic behaviors of different bacterial genera when metabolizing glucose, lactose, sucrose and sodium thiosulfate, a sulfur compound. Fermentation of these sugars lead to the production of acid, resulting in a decrease in the medium's pH and a shift to a red color. Additionally, the metabolic activity involving sodium thiosulfate is reflected in the medium turning black. Initially, bacteria capable of fermentating glucose produce metabolic acids, causing the medium's pH to drop and both the slant and butt regions to turn yellow. However, as glucose becomes depleted, this acid production diminishes. In the case of bacteria unable to ferment lactose and or sucrose, they are incapable of utilizing these sugars as carbon sources. Consequently, once glucose is consumed, the oxidative breakdown of peptone in the slant occurs. This oxidative process elevates the medium's pH to an alkaline level, turning the yellow slant to red. However, due to limited oxygen in the butt region, oxidative degradation of peptone does not occur there and the butt regions are unchanged in the color. Therefore, bacteria that don't ferment lactose and or sucrose but ferment glucose will exhibit a red snot and a yellow butt, designated as red-yellow or K by A. In contrast, when bacteria are capable of fermentating lactose and or sucrose, they initiate the fermentation process resulting in acid production that lowers the medium's pH. 
this acid production causes both the slant and butt regions to turn yellow given the abundance presence of carbohydrate sucrose and lactose since there is no triggering of the oxidative metabolism of peptone in this scenario bacteria that ferment lactose and or sucrose or all three sugars will display a yellow slant and yellow bud designated as yellow by yellow or a by a if bacteria are unable to ferment any of the sugars the medium remains red labeled as red by red or k by k bacteria capable of producing hydrogen sulfide h2s can break down the sodium thiosulfate in the culture medium leading to the release of h2s gas this h2s gas subsequently reacts with ferric ions forming water insoluble ferrous sulfide which appears black the presence of h2s is indicated by the development of this insoluble black colored substance in the culture medium additionally the emergence of gas bubbles above the medium or any disturbance or displacement of the medium serve as indicators that gas is being produced during sugar fermentation requirements for tsia test number 1 culture media triple sugar iron agar medium is used for the tsia test composition of tsi media per 1000 ml is pepton 20 g hm extract meat extract 3 g yeast extract 3 g dextrose glucose 1 g lactose 10 g sucrose 10 g sodium chloride 5 g ferric citrate 0.3 g sodium thiosulfide 0.3 g phenol red 0.024 g and lastly agar 12 g preparation of tsi medium slant weigh out the appropriate quantity of tsi media powder which should be 64.62 g per 1000 ml and dissolve it in the required volume of water in a conical flask or glass bottle ensure thorough dissolution by stirring the mixture vigorously using a magnetic stirrer or by manual agitation heat the mixture to the boiling point to ensure complete dissolution of all components including the agar in the water Dispense approximately 5 to 7 ml of the prepared medium into each test tube and lightly cover the opening with a cap or a cotton plug. Subject the test tubes to autoclaving at 121 degrees Celsius and 15 pounds of pressure for a duration of 15 minutes. After autoclaving, allow the tubes to cool and position them at a slant of approximately 30 degree in its solution to facilitate the formation of a agar slant with a butt that is about 2.5 to 5 cm in depth number 2 reagents there is no need for any extra reagents number 3 equipments you need to have test tubes incubator waiting machine autoclave bunsen burner inoculating loop PPE and other general laboratory materials. Number 4, sample organism, test bacteria. Number 5, control organisms. Salmonella paratyphi A, ATCC 9150. Proteus vulgaris, ATCC 6380. Salmonella typhi murium, ATCC 14028. Citrobacter ferendi ATCC 8090 Shigella flexneri ATCC 12022 Escherichia coli ATCC 25922 Pseudomonas aeruginosa ATCC 27853 If this video is helpful don't forget to support my channel by subscribing Procedure of TSIA test With a sterile inoculating wire pick a well isolated clony from a fresh culture of the test bacterium that has been incubated for 18 to 24 hours Insert the inoculating wire into the butt of the test tube piercing it to a depth of 3 to 5 mm above the base 
while withdrawing the wire streak the snout of the medium place the tube in an aerobic environment with a loosely screwed cap and incubate at a temperature of 35 degree celsius for approximately 24 hours examine the tube for any color changes in both the slant and the butt regions and report these observed colors within 24 hours of the incubation period if you wish to assess hydrogen sulfide production continue incubating for an additional 24 to 48 hours but focus on elevating sugar fermentation and color changes within the first 24 hours of incubation and inoculation result and interpretation of tsia test when you observe a red slant and a yellow butt referred to as red by yellow or alkaline k by acidic a it indicates that only glucose has undergone fermentation if both the slant and the butt appear yellow turned yellow by yellow or acidic a by acidic a this suggests that the fermentation of lactose and or sucrose or possibly the fermentation of all three sugars a scenario where both the slant and the butt are red designated as red by red or alkaline k by alkaline k signifies that none of these three sugars have been undergone fermentation the development of a black coloration in the medium or the formation of black spots indicate the production of hydrogen sulfide h2s the presence of cracks in the medium the formation of gas bubbles within the medium or the creation of gaps in the medium amplifies the generation of gas quality control results the control organism yields the following outcomes acerasia coli displays a yellow by yellow result exhibits gas production and does not produce hydrogen sulfide citrobacter ferentiae shows a yellow by yellow result indicates gas production and produces hydrogen sulfide proteus vulgaris presents a red by yellow result does not produce gas and produces hydrogen sulfide salmonella paratyphi a exhibits a red by yellow result demonstrates gas production and does not produce hydrogen sulfide salmonella typhi murium displays a red by yellow result indicates gas production and produces hydrogen sulfide shigella flexneri shows red by yellow result does not produce gas and does not produce hydrogen sulfide pseudomonas aeruginosa presents a red by red result does not produce gas and does not produce hydrogen sulfide for easier visualization of the results here is a table it includes the name of bacteria color of slant by butt ph of slant by butt h2s production and gas production now let's dive into the precautions if the medium is damaged or exhibits gap before inoculation it is advisable not to use it as it could only potentially yield incorrect results regarding gas production avoid using an inoculating loop for stabbing as it may lead to cracking in the medium potentially causing confusion when assessing gas production it's important to refrain from interpreting the sugar utilization results before the incubation period reaches 18 hours this is because glucose may not have been entirely utilized at this stage and as a result the oxidative metabolism of the peptones might not have commenced likewise it's not recommended to delay the result reading long after 24 hour mark as the entire tube may become completely black hindering the observation of any color changes in the medium if there is a need to assess the results after 24 hours remove the tubes from the incubator and store them in the freezer at the temperature of 4 degrees celsius let's see the applications of tsi test preliminary recognition of enteric pathogens especially those belonging to the gram negative bacilli group distinguishing and categorizing members of the enterobacteriaceae family identifying lactose fermentating organisms non lactose fermenters and those capable of producing hydrogen sulfide a vital instrument for the biochemical identification of bacteria in both research and diagnostic laboratory settings lastly let's look into the limitation of tsi test 
This test serves as a primarily and differential assay, necessitating supplementary tests for the final confirmation of bacterial identification. It is recommended to interpret the results within the specific time frame of 18 to 24 hours, avoiding both premature and delayed readings. This strict time limit is crucial to prevent the occurrence of misleading outcomes. It's worth noting that this test is not universally applicable to all fecal bacteria. For instance, in cases of mixed bacterial populations, accurate results may not be achievable, leading to similar outcomes for different bacteria like E. coli and Klebsiella species. The production of hydrogen sulfide may be inhibited in the presence of sucrose fermentating bacteria. This test does not enable the distinction between the fermentation of lactose or sucrose individually or both sugars together. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you so much for watching.